Welcome back to the channel, guys. Thanks for joining me today. You're rolling with Popo Jones. Today, we're going to be looking at the C7 Corvette and a known issue. We're on Vet Tech Monday. If you're part of the Thumbs Up Squad, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all new content that I'm publishing every single week on Corvettes. All right, I got John here with me with Texas Auto Elite. And we have a C7 back here behind me on the rack. That's actually my C7. And we, we got a problem with the torque tube. Oh, yeah. uh, it's more of the bushings than anything, right? Yeah, it's definitely bushings. So this is a known issue on the on the Corvettes. Yeah. How long have, have you uh, been working on these things? Oh, probably 14, 15 years. So and I've done quite a few of them. Quite a few. 14, 15 years, that's quite a while. And uh, you said this this goes back, how, how far back does this issue Essentially go? Essentially to 98, 97, 98, C5 years. So I'm going to show you guys the uh, what this what this torque tube looks like. I'm going to flip this camera around real quick. So look at these bushings. I mean, they are torn to shreds. There's not much there. I mean, it it's pretty bad there on that side, and then this side looks even worse. So wh what's going on with the torque tube there? So from what I've, as far as research over the years, I've definitely seen that heat is the biggest killer for these bushings. Um, Anything that gets, keeps them close to the exhaust because that exhaust just rides right under that torque tube. So while driving, it's just heating it up and the fiberglass and the rubber inside of it starts to fracture. And then as it fractures, obviously it starts to shred and creates a, a lot of slack in the drive line. So the first time I encountered this problem and, and the reason why I knew I was having an issue was because whenever I drive my Corvette, uh, when it would you know, take off and I put my foot on the gas pedal, you'd feel you'd feel like there was a bit of a, the best way I can explain it, a spin and then a, a quick punch, like it right. hit. And you could feel it. And the longer I drove it like that, as a matter of fact, the first time I felt it, um, I immediately grabbed a, a tech uh, up at my dealership and we went for a drive. He's like, yeah, that's not right. It's not supposed to be doing that. And uh, so we started the process of diagnosing it. And then eventually we came to conclude that, yeah, the, the torque tube was having some issues. Um, before I could put it in the shop, I drove it a little bit longer and it continued to build up and get worse and worse. And it got to the point where, I mean, it, every time I touched the gas pedal, it was a strong hit. Uh, and now I know why, especially looking at those uh, bushings down there. I mean, they look, they yeah, look they, they terrible. They for sure. Y yeah, yeah, I mean, so, and you were telling me earlier, the, the bushings on these C7s, and I don't know if it's the same with the C6, C8, but they're, they're a rubber-like substance that it's, it gives. It's not a yeah. solid surface. It's, it's designed to absorb the shock from the powertrain because you're transferring the power from the engine to the transmission in the back. And in 90% of the time, most modern drive shafts have those externally mounted on the drive shaft to absorb shock instead of using U-joints anymore. And like with the C8, it's a direct link between the engine trans and differential. So. You don't even have a drive shaft, just axles. Whenever we replace them with the solid isolators, you won't have that absorption effect, but it will power transfer better. You know, you don't have that delay of the absorption of the shock, the absorption of this shock, and then it goes into the transmission. But it's a way to keep it where it doesn't come apart ever again. Is there typically an amount of miles that you usually start seeing where that occurs, or is it just vary? It depends really honestly on, on drive time, um, because like I said, it's based off of heat. So somebody can have 150,000 miles on their car, but have driven it for that 30 years to get that mileage out of it. And they never see it because it never sees highway and never heats up as much as somebody that goes 70,000 miles in four or five years, you know. So in my case where I have a, a 2014 and there's just hit the 70 mark on it. I mean, I daily drive it. I'm not gonna have a Corvette not right, daily drive exactly. it. I enjoy it. Might as well enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and it didn't pop up until uh, just about a month ago. Right. So, uh, you know, for me, daily driving, going 70,000 miles on two, I mean, we went 10 years right. before we ran into this issue. Exactly. So, um, so some people are gonna see it sooner, but it's all based off of heat. So it just depends. And then also build quality, you know, there's always those that are just not as well built. You know, it wasn't built on a Wednesday, so they're not as <laughs> yeah. well assembled. So you'll see them fell at 30,000 miles, but yeah. some never have that issue and they'll go 120,000 and they'll, then they'll start to fail, so. So let's take a look at the transmission back here and uh, some of the other things that's going on and, and other parts that we're having to replace as a result of issues with the bushings. So for starters here, we have all this 
dust here down on the floor. I mean, it, it's pretty, uh, there's a lot of it. It's pretty thick. I mean, this is all rubber, right? Fiberglass and rubber. Fiberglass and rubber. And that's directly from the bushings wearing out, right? Yeah. So that's a lot to, uh, to have given over the course of time. Uh, so we got the transmission here hanging down, and one of the things that you're having to do as a result of this is replace the, the transmission mounts, right? Correct. So what what else uh, could you potentially run into whenever you have this issue with the, the bushing? So the most common thing that I see um, when those bushings fail is the drive shaft will start slapping inside of the torque tube. It'll hit the side of the torque tube wall, and because of that, you have to replace it as an assembly. Luckily. You caught yours in time. So if I understand correctly, the flywheel is something else that could be damaged uh, as a result of this, which is not oh, the yeah. case in, in, in my Corvette. But yeah. uh, what, what do you end up replacing that with? So most of the time, it's any time you have to go in and replace like a base or a Z51, you want to upgrade to a Z06. It's definitely designed to hold more power, more torque. It's more reliable. Um, the expense of it's a little higher, but it's, it's worth the expense. You're not going to go back in and replace it again. Um, the flywheels are a multi-piece design, and obviously with any sort of extensive shock, they're going to they're gonna crack. So what's the typical time frame to replace this? So on the C7s and C6s, it's about 13 hours. Um, that's just... That's just general book time. Obviously, when you get adapted to it, it takes you a little less time. You figure out little tips and tricks to get everything out. Uh, but if you're doing mounts and stuff, yeah, you're looking at about 13 hours or so total time in as far as in and out, rebuilding the entire torque tube. All right, so here at Texas Elite Auto, you do a lot of performance vehicles. You work a lot oh, yeah. on Corvettes. You work. What else do you work on? Um, we do a lot of like classic builds too. We we do regular repairs, like as far as you know, your daily driving vehicles, engine, transmission, AC, brakes, suspension, everything. We're bumper to bumper. Um, so, but your bread and butter, from from what I've got, I mean, you, it's performance vehicles. Oh yeah, I yeah, mean, you, we, you we, drive a performance vehicle. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we typically, I mean, I would say forty to fifty percent of what we see come in here is performance related. So, um, but we. We work on all spectrums of vehicles. So you've got a vehicle that y'all are fixing to work on. We've talked about just a little bit. It's a C8 Corvette. You're gonna be yeah. doing some modifications to it. I'm really excited right. about it. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you're doing to it. So we're gonna be doing, uh, obviously dropping the engine out, doing cam, heads. We're sending the heads off to GPI. The cam's gonna be GPI cam. Um, doing an upgraded clutch. It's supposed to be a thousand horsepower clutch. Whoo, man. And a set of turbos on it. And it's gonna be tuned also by GPI. So it's gonna be a pretty good build. Yes, you're building a beast out of a C8 Corvette. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're it's already, you know, an amazing vehicle, but yeah. you're, you're just taking it up to a different level. Yeah, so. yeah, I have this one and I have another one I'm supposed to be building, but he wants more power out of it. Wow. So we'll see how that one goes. Okay, so. and, and we're gonna, when that comes in and it's time, we're gonna come back and we're oh, yeah. gonna talk about that and uh, let you kind of tell us uh, what you're doing with it. Definitely. So, well, guys, thank you for joining us today on uh, Vet, Vet Tech Monday. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for uh, some performance upgrades, you got some work to do on your Corvette, this is the guy right here. He's the owner of uh, Texas Elite Auto and uh, it's down here in Tyler, Texas. What's the best way to reach you? Um, most of the time through Facebook, but you can also call us. Um, we're posted everywhere, Facebook, Google. You can look at all our reviews, see you know what we do. Um, our phone number is 903-941-7344, so. Well, John, I sure do appreciate it. Thank you for walking us through on uh, my Corvette and what we're doing here. And uh, yeah, no problem. letting our viewers know that's a known issue on C7 Corvettes, C6 Corvettes, and uh, what the fix is for it. Oh, and yeah. uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video.